but this here is what brought foiling to the masses like this right here this is it this is the thing that made modern day hydrofoiling Alexa, open Paragon. Okay. Yeah, that just happened. Touchless boat covers, what? That's a thing. Okay, we're talking foils today. This is really exciting. I've been waiting a long time to do this. Number one, Coast Guard approved vest. It not only keeps you safe, it keeps you protected, but also while you're waiting for the boat to go to put line tension in, you're gonna be sitting there waiting for the boat to go and you're like, well, I just, I, heard, I wish that boat would go. If you're wearing something that actually floats you, you don't get upset with the boat driver. You just float. It's so much more relaxing. This here is the Jet Pilot Murray life jacket and uh, you can get a bunch of different colorways. This is the Hyperlite foil lineup. When I first got on a foil, it was kind of scary. I was like, I feel like I'm gonna get chopped by this thing, run over by this thing, but it's not quite like that. In this video, I'm not gonna tell you guys about the how-to on these things, but as you know, I'm gonna be creating that content on my channel, so you can check that out. And in this edit, you guys are gonna meet Mike Murphy, who I consider to be the godfather of foiling. He's an amazing water sports athlete. Tony Clarich is a guy that I looked up to my entire life. Like, he was like the hot dog water skier, the kneeboard joker, like all these things, and now super grateful to call those guys friends. So I headed down to Tony's place in Cypress Gardens to find out about the history of foiling. How did we get here? So. Let's get that started. People think we're crazy here in Florida because we have alligators. Well, it's not that big of a deal. But when you see one like right there next to the dock, you're like, I'll start out there. All right, now we go on, we're gonna sit ski, ski seat. What's it called? Ski, there are two names. Originally it came out as ski seat and then it came out after that called sit ski. What year? Not knowing definitely, I'd hesitate to make a positive assumption. I would assumption. say probably early, early 80s. And, and why this is important is that this device... I want to give you some context so you can rewatch that last interaction because to me it's funny knowing that Mike Murphy is Tony Clarich's uncle. So Tony is Mike's nephew and Tony... Uh, not only are these the guys that like growing up, I had pictures of them cut out going around my room. I talked about it in the first set. It. I grew up in water skiing. And if you've heard of Tony Clarich and Mike Murphy, these are the guys. I would take Water Ski Magazine and an X-Acto knife and I would cut out the athletes. But Tony also studies like the history of water ski and everything. The guy is phenomenal out on the water. So between their family dynamic and Tony's knowledge, it's just funny to me. I, I think it's awesome and it goes on throughout the whole day. Originally it came out as ski seat and then it came out after that called sit ski. What year? Not knowing definitely, I'd hesitate to make a positive assumption. I would assumption. say probably early early 80s. And, and why this is important is that this device, combined with the stand-up hydrofoils that you just rode, was the conception of the air chair, which was the first production model towed sit-down hydrofoil. And that that's why I want to ride this. So yeah. So this is basically bridging the gap between the skis that I just rode. and then the air chair. So Mike, you said you just squeeze these together because this, when you put the foil under this, it kept hitting you up in the undercarriage. Daddy. This is very technologically advanced. Check this out. You sit and twist. twist the seat. And this upholstery is nice. Here's what's, here's what's cool about this. Cypress Garden skis, the Alcapocos, Cypress Garden is right there. 
Hey, this is Tony Claritur on Lake Eloise, beautiful Cypress Gardens. This lake is where so much stuff happens, so many firsts, so many records. First demonstration of hydrofoiling, and today we're gonna show an important spot in the development of hydrofoiling. That is the kneeboard hydrofoil, that's right. Um, I'm here with Sean Murray. We're gonna ride double up. Pretty dang excited about that. I think it's been since about 1995 or six or seven since we did this. So uh, let's see what we got right here. I'm on some old Cypress Garden skis. Get down, Cypress Garden. And there's Tony Flynn on the knee foil. This is the original. Is this the first gen air Yes. Chair? This is yes. the first one. Yes. Okay. The reason but I'm asking him. Because the first generation did not have heel straps and we added this and it had pl a plastic belt buckle he was a co-creator on the air chair back in what year 1989 that's when we got a patent that i think we had it a few years before that it came out in like 90. and here's what's special about this this is mine and my buddy jeff danielson's our family co-owned this because back in the day this was a spendy little item you know much more than normal We're like let's split it like and a thousand bucks he's had it um, I got my hands back on it. I have not ridden this since it was in St. Louis where I grew up on Lake St. Louis. And I'm gonna take this thing out and see if I can ride it. It's been probably close to 30 years. Mike is going to ride this. This is crazy. This is the future. <laughs> this is the sky ski, actually, carbon fiber, long mast. Actually, it's very old, it's very old. It's a lot newer than this. Oh, compared to this. <laughs> this is happening, Mike Murphy. Original, original foiler. He's getting on the sky ski. When was the last time you rode one of these things? Uh, I rode this a couple months ago. When was the first time you rode one of these things? Probably about 86. Stand up 66. Stand up 66. So first foil you ever stood on. 57 years ago. That's awesome. That was great, Mike. <laughs> I didn't know if I could still flip or not. Dude, well, <laughs> hey, no problem. Get him a camera, he's good. You want to bring your family out here sometime? You got a couple of hours. <laughs> so I'm just gonna start in the water. It's been like 30 years, man. There was a little bit of me that when I was starting, I was like, maybe I'll flip it. And I thought, I'm gonna break my chest. 
This is the original, original, original. You see here, it's not even streamlined. This is nothing streamlined. That the wing is on the back wing. We didn't know mm. it should be turned over the other direction because you constantly, see how it's constantly going up and down. You were doing yeah. that. That's because these wings were neutral They're to the other. Nothing for it to lean against. Tr try the other one, and you'll see it's totally different. But just to be able to clear wakes like you were doing out there. It's but unbelievable the, on this. But but the, the the difference between the skis that I rode first. And then San Tony on the kneeboard, that was definitely like the okay, this is this is a different sport that we can uh -huh. get into. But this here is what brought foiling to the masses. Like this right here. This is it. This is the thing that made modern day hydrofoiling. Yes. And then we just kept making it better and better and better. Launch! It launches. Hey, I felt John. the seat go whap up like. The future is now. So we've just gone from the first foils that were ever ridden on skis from way more than 50 years ago through a couple different iterations to what we have now. I've got the Hyperlite Magic Carpet Carbon Fiber on the shuttle board and uh, like Murph and I, we're gonna go out for a little bit of a foil. Foiling is super fun. Like it just opens up a whole different ball game of all the different places that you can go behind the boat. I tell everybody it's the second best thing there is and they always say what's the first and I say ice cream man hands down. Favorite flavor? Yeah Rocky Road oh, nice. or chocolate marshmallows even better. <laughs> Until you feel it, you just don't understand. It's the coolest feeling. My first experience with it, I had a fun time. It, it took me a little bit to get it figured out. And while I've had a couple times where like the mast, I've, you know, collided with it, it's not nearly, it's not the risk that I thought it was. You're and only going 11 miles an hour. The wings are not like. They're not razor sharp. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not like the alloy, aluminum alloy that are sharp. Yeah. I mean, it, I mean, we have to be respectful. Things can happen, right? Yeah. Still. Uh, be, on anything. Yeah, you have to be respectful and you, you can't let it lull you into a sense of security that you're totally safe because things can still happen. But at the same time, in water sports, it's on the lower end of the, of the risk yes. stuff. You know, you're I, probably I, not going to blow out your knee, you know, or tear a rotator cuff. I was more scared on the sit ski today. Well, with all those bar holes. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mike, hey. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Tony. 
Thank Absolute. you. I, I'm glad you're bringing the history to the masses, you know? Absolute pleasure. Beautiful. This has been a ton of fun. I thank you guys for following along. Hope you guys have learned something. Be inspired to take some time to get out on the water with your family and friends to come to a great spot. Hey, if you want to know, this Tony, this place is an Airbnb. We can put the link in the description below. If you want to get away from the cold or get to a great spot, you can actually stand right here. So Cypress Gardens Lake House. Cypress Gardens Lake On Lake, Lake Eloise. House. Cypress Gardens, just five doors down. So hopefully you guys can connect uh, some good times down here as well. But whatever you're doing, uh, just make sure you're getting out there, being safe, being smart. You guys can check a lot of the links in the descriptions below for the companies that I work with if you want to know the gear and things that I, I like to uh, use when I get out on the water. Also, thank you guys for watching. If you guys have any questions or comments for myself or these guys, put those below. And always appreciate it when you guys like and share to get this content out there even more. And if you guys don't subscribe, maybe consider doing that. You can also hit the notification bell to know when videos are going live. And no matter what you're doing, always enjoy your ride. Peace. Later. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So it was and like then when it really, when it really started jumping with popularity, is when Laird figured out you could surf. Them. Again, this is just one perspective of a guy who studied it. Yes. Here's what I think happened. Okay. So in the late 90s, when he taught Gabrielle and then Laird to ride, Laird rode and he took it to that next awareness because he took it and he, and he rode in the surf. Like it was all over the place, yeah. national consciousness. Oh, but that was not the right ride for the board because it wasn't accessible to everybody. So it kind of just languished for a while. Then the kiteboarders started getting into foiling because now you could kite with lower winds in the same kite. That's the next step, right? Yeah, see, he was the first one to ride a foil. He was the kite. first one to ride under a kite, but now the kiteboarders themselves were riding, they were on boards. They saw this Laird doing this thing, hey, we're gonna adapt this to kiteboarding. So now you can use the same, the same kite and the same wind and ride with yeah. the foil. Yeah. So then the technology started getting to next levels like this. Along comes Kyleni, the guy who does everything, right? Kiteboards, surfs, everything else. So he's kite foiling and then he takes it back to surfing, stand up paddleboard surfing with the foil on it. Yeah. So that was the first time it went back into surfing again with the different thing, not towing in. He was paddling himself in with the board. And then the technology started going and it started developing into the surf thing, wave surfing mm -hmm. and, and kiteboarding. And that's when the, the foils changed and they became all the different lift stuff. And then it came back to the boat with, um, with um, well, who, who was it, uh, wake foil or? Slingshot. McKee, Slingshot. Yeah. Yeah. And then it came back to the boat. And you know, it was only really a couple years ago that the I tried for years to be able to foil surf. I couldn't do it until two years ago. The technology just wasn't there. Yeah. But and, the, and that's, reality, that's what's crazy. In reality, when I did it behind the X80 and the... And